everyone, and welcome to the very, very live <laughs> Thursday Live Lessons. My name is Aldrin Guerrero. Joining me on camera today is Mr. Aaron, the voice, usually just the voice, but now it's the face and the voice. <laughs> no, come on. Say what's up, Aaron. What's up? And uh, the beautiful voice of Mr. Kahai, the legend for again. Say what's up, Kahai. What's up? So last week, you know, we weren't here, so we had a not oh, so yeah. live. No, we were. Oh, wait, yeah, 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 yeah that's right. <laughs> last, that's right. The week before. The week, be- yeah, the week before. <laughs> you know, and, uh, we weren't, we weren't here, but last week, we, uh, we, we put special. up a special, you know, a special edition of Thursday Live Lesson, which, uh, which talks about the story of Bandito Tyler. So if you guys haven't checked that out yet, please check that out. Um, it's a good kind of insight to, uh, to my songwriting, just songwriting in general and just kind of, um, composing things for the ukulele. So we talked a lot about that kind of stuff, but we are back this week. Um, very live. So that was semi live, you know. <laughs> Semi live. We did it one take. I guess we were alive. We, we were we... alive. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was that, that was, was from San shirt. Francisco. I didn't right? have any new shirts. I wore the same shirt. <laughs> we recreated the set yeah. at San Francisco. We teleported yeah. from San Francisco to Hawaii. But yeah, so how Thursday Live Lesson works is if you guys have any questions, we get them throughout the week or throughout the month or throughout the years and stuff, and we try to answer them as best as we can. The three guys here are all going to put our brains together and come up with the best answer as possible so let's start this off kahai give me a question uh this is from jasmine okay uh well first off she said thanks for making thursday live lesson available on apple Podcasts." oh hey so she's been yeah. listening to it and learning who, who's who's to thank for that uh who, who did that oh well kira is the one that uploads it right I I don't know. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Kira, for uploading those episodes. Because I was like, I don't, I don't want to take like I can't I can't take credit for that. I didn't do anything. I just talked in front of a you know, in front of camera. Like the the guys working behind the scenes, working very 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 hard, deserves for that credit. Let's give a round of applause. Yeah. So um yeah, it's a uh, Thursday live lessons. If you guys haven't uh, checked it out yet, go check out Apple Podcasts and a bunch of other places that you can download podcasts at. Um, you basically just need an RSS feed, right, in order to get you know those podcasts. Yeah. and I think uh, we have that on our site too, right? Mm-hmm. So you like where you can get the yeah, RSS yeah. feed. Yeah, if you're on ukuleleunderground.com on the page, mm-hmm. you can just. I think it's ukuleleunderground.com/slash/podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so you so. can have it directly into uh, you know into your, into your computer. So. That's that's awesome. So, what is uh, his or her question? Uh, so, Jasmine's question is: uh, Could you give some tips for getting started with live looping and discuss mm. some of the theory behind it? What sorts of layers do you like to use? Finger picking, mm. strumming, percussive, etc. Uh, do you have any tips for dealing with songs that have different chord progressions in the verse and chorus? Mm. Okay, um, I I am by no means a looping expert and stuff. I rarely use loops, but I, I know how they work. I brought my looper in today because I was uh, I was kind of looking at this question prior to uh, prior to today's episode. Excuse me. We didn't this. we didn't hook it up. We didn't hook it up. Yeah, we're like, oh, um, I'll just bring my loop pedal, but we didn't think about a um uh <laughs> an amp or anything that yeah. so, so people can hear it. So this is a this is a loop pedal that I use. This is kind of basic. This is a RC30. Um, this is made by Boss. I love me some Boss pedals. You know, Boss uh, makes some really like solid pedals. Like they might not be as fancy as some of the other ones and stuff. But Boss pedals are just like built tough on stage. You can like kick them around, and I've I you know because you're gonna step on them. They're going to get beaten up. So Boss, very 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 reliable. Um, this is kind of the next stage up. There's one. Like even more simple than this, where it's just one, um, just one like pedal. half of this, basically, yeah. you know, half, half of this. this is two. So uh, these two buttons, this one right here on the left, is the actual record and play and uh, all that, all that good stuff. So this is your main, you know, the main pedal that you're gonna use with this, or main button that you're gonna use with this pedal. Uh, the one on the right is a stop. You know, you just kind of stop the uh, uh, stop the loop, and you can um, you can hold it down and. Uh, delete the last loop that you did or you can hold this down and then press this to delete the whole you know the whole thing okay so those are basically just the basics of you know of looping like if you if you press this once it'll start recording and if you press it again it'll stop recording but it'll you know it'll keep the uh, it'll restart the loop so from wherever you first pressed it when you press it again It'll, uh, you know, it'll replay that. So for, those, for those people who don't know how loopers work, that's basically what it is. So if, um, you know, for example, if I'm using it on my ukulele, if I press, uh, if I'm playing, 
press right here at beat one. So. That's kind of, and then I press it again right there at beat one. So that's kind of the trick uh, is you need to kind of press it where, you know, where you want the loop to start again, where uh, it's it's going to loop into a nice, uh, let's say, in, in a, oh, I'm trying to think like of a, a word. Kind of a continuous yeah, loop. Yeah, a continuous loop. Like, yeah, so if you, you keep that in mind, right? Yeah, if you like... press it at beat one and then you, uh, you know, you press it at beat two and it repeats at beat one, it's not going to be consistent because you're going to have beat two twice. Yeah, you know? so it's kind of like with that you were playing the chords Double with G, G and C and C and, and you're going to go G. back to G so right here right, would, right that's yeah. where I would start the loop and then the loop would kind of just start again and it would loop that G, C, G, C over and over and over again from where I uh, started and ended the loop yeah. so I like so it's like if you had a four chord pattern you would go through all four chords mm -hmm. and then right when you were coming back yeah then you I think, press the loop pedal and then right, it would right, right. repeat them you know, you wanna, infinitely. Or you want to think about like what uh, what things you want to keep happening over yeah. and around. how much, yeah. right? Because yeah. like there are like patterns where even though it repeats, mm -hmm. you probably want like two bars or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's, that's mm -hmm. true. Just because because like the line maybe or whatever something yeah. happens yeah. or like there's just little things you you do. So like that can be another thing about the mm -hmm. layers, right? Adding layers. Yeah, you gotta kind of think about what you're going to record in the future mm -hmm. and make sure that there's enough space for that. So like, mm -hmm. so if you're, you're doing GC, GC, and you think that, you know, it's just that, but maybe the drum that you're, or the kind of drum sound that you're mm -hmm. doing is longer than that. You have to make so sure that make you sure have enough space for the longer. For like, Cause yeah. that's maybe like what? <clears throat> One, two, three, like eight bars, you know, G and uh, G and C. But if you're a drum loop or if like the drum beat that you want to do is 16 bars, for yeah, example, yeah. you know? Or you want to add a fill yeah, right yeah, at the end. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> That's a good one. You got you to gotta, like, do the regular beat for mm. that much and then right, that, right at the end mm. do that and then it, the loop uh, will start again. An example, um, when, when, I play, when I play solo, I, I like to play this song, um, Breezen. So Breezen has a four, a four chord... Um, pattern that was up that's it okay. I was holding yeah. it too long okay. so. I would do it twice instead of like trying to restart it on C page 7 again because uh, there's the riff that goes with the song that goes every other eight um yeah, eight bars. So if you so, yeah. sixteen Yeah, so if you try to try to last strum that for me. So imagine if I did the loop and Aaron is playing that loop. So so you try it. So yeah. I'll keep it going for one more. And then and then I would kind of step on it again. And that's what that's what you would hear. And on the second out run, I'm gonna do. Because I don't want that to keep kind of going. So now when I do, that's when it goes. But I don't want it like continuously playing, you, so I give myself what? Can you show it if you did like just loop, you know? Like... Yeah, it's tough. It's tough because I'm trying to do like two <laughs> things. I wish I brought my uh, or like uh, my day can, can Aaron uh, keep playing and can you just show like what it would because it oh, wouldn't yeah, have yeah, that yeah. pause. Okay, like okay. that's what I meant. Uh, so it would just sound like. Something, but no. in the song you do want. Yeah, that. you want the space for. Yeah, so when you, want, you, yeah, so when you play. It. Yeah, that's kind of when it when it comes in. Yeah, like when uh, when the phrase ends. So you want to make sure that you have, uh, you know, two kind of go like go arounds on the C A minor D minor G. Now, 
those, you know, those are the basics. And they were asking, like, what kind of uh, layers that, you know, that I would put. I'm a guy who loves, 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 loves layers. And when I when I do my solo shows, I have, like, 12, uh, by the end, I have, like, 12, 15 layers going on. I have, like, the strumming pattern. I might, you know, I might have, like, one that goes, like, a... And then I'll have, like, a, a harmony of that. Of... And then I have a harmony of that going... So I've these three things. Oh, I really wish I brought my amp now. I've these you know, three <laughs> things that like I'm kind of looping like over and over again until this big thing at the end, and then I'll just like kind of stop it abruptly and play like, and then that's kind of how I would end it. That's how I play uh, "You Gonna Stick Live" like by myself. I'd play a D minor, C, B flat, A seven for the chords, and I'll just loop that, and then I just do my thing. You know, just pick away. Um, but my suggestions for uh, for layers would be to uh, to have some kind of percussion thing, okay? So percussion, uh, very 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 important. But if you're playing as a uh, you know as a soloist, you don't you want it to kind of seem like seamless, you know? Like you you don't want it to be too obvious. Like if I go and then like I stop playing and then it just go. It's like it's playing in the uh, in the speakers, but I'm not doing anything. So the audience automatically you're you're, you're taking it away because like okay, well he's using a pedal, you know, like uh, to to kind of to kind of do that. But if you're doing like um, and then you do that, and then you do something else, like the the less you do the more obvious it's it's gonna you know it's gonna become i actually do not i don't want to like say uh say bad or mean things to different people looping but i'm not a big fan of people like who will take like a minute and a half two just minutes like set up the just song. to set up the loop and then like yeah. and then they'll start singing or then they'll play the uh, the main melody line like if you're not getting to the me- uh to the melody line within like the first 30 seconds like then, then it's. I think it's gonna be kind of. <laughs> well, kind of it's it's bad. I think it's kind of bad. I think there's people mm-hmm. who know what their loop is gonna be already, mm-hmm. and like that's what they're they're just like, okay, I'm building to that, right? Yeah. So yeah. I can play my song. I'm, mm-hmm. I just want to get there so I can yeah. play my song. But then there's other people who yeah. use it as like, oh, let me figure out what this song mm-hmm. is gonna be, <laughs> what I can yeah. add, yeah. and like, yeah, kind of if you're performing, yeah. like that might not be the. It mm-hmm. like I like doing that with a loop pedal too. I like yeah. experimenting, but mm-hmm. when you're performing, it might not be the yeah, best for, time for to... the performance. Performance aspect. it has it seems uh, you know has to be seamless. So if there's no picking pattern in the uh, you know in the beginning, it doesn't make sense to like um, you know to just just play just the chords and then like and then loop it and then wait until it comes around again. Like you can play the chords if the um, you know if the chords are part of your verse or whatever, and just play that. And it just like just kind of starts singing and and loop that you know that those verse chords and then like once it loops again just, just play it again play something else while you're singing so at least the song's moving forward and it's not just like you're creating all these loops before you know before the even the song even starts so that's kind of my big gripe about people who uh, who kind of do loops like I don't like uh, there's some people that just kind of start it and then they'll they'll step and then they'll just kind of like listen to themselves like feel it out that kind of thing like <laughs> that pause. As an audience member, it is like the most boring thing because yeah, that's just kind of, kind of them kind of like, waiting for man, I did such a good job with this loop. And it's like, like no, it's just I, doing things, you know? And I think like some people like, or some people who use loop pedals, they think, mm-hmm. oh man, wait till they hear the final loop. It'll be so impressive. <laughs> but it's like the audience doesn't know yeah. that. They're just like waiting. three minutes in, yeah. you know? It's but like, then that's, that's why the people who are really good at it, mm-hmm. they can do it kind of like, the well, like, a, It'll just a, sound like a, a song. song. Yeah, yeah, a song naturally builds, so mm-hmm. they create the loops or like the layers as the song. As builds. the song's progressing, yeah, and then and then they can kind of like cut it down mm-hmm. or bring it up, mm-hmm. bring it I, back whenever mm-hmm. it the song kind of calls for mm-hmm. it. I was gonna but say that's like a lot of planning. You have yeah, to do in, or I, I think I, I the way I think of loops is like you're you already have the end product in mind and you're kind of mm-hmm. building mm-hmm. backwards, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like you're deconstructing it and then going like, mm-hmm. okay, so first I need to do this. Then I need to do yeah. this. Then I need to do this. Yeah. But if yeah. you're performing, it's it's also like you have to work it in a way that it's still it know, should fun be. for the audience. Yeah. Yeah. And still. Yeah. Think about think about the audience because I, I feel like a lot of the 
the loopers and, and performers nowadays and stuff, they don't really think. They're just so into their loop and their craft and stuff. Like, they kind of forget that there's an audience listening in, you know? Like, if there's an audience listening in to, say, we when whenever we would cut records or, like, whenever we're trying to record anything, you know, it would be super boring, right? Like, because you're, yeah. you're kind of yeah. seeing the production. is like, okay, when's the, you know, when's the actual thing? It could be, like, the best, you know, like... uh the best song being created right in front of you, but sooner or later, later you're going to get bored. Just you know, like you want to just hear just the, the song, song already, you know? The song. So if we're talking what, you know, what layers we're going to, we're going to put, um, I want to, you know, I'm gonna, I, I would usually start out with, you know, with, with the strumming pattern or with the, with the chord pattern. I'll start with the chord pattern and then I'll come up with some kind of, you know, some kind of beat or you can do it the opposite way if you want the beat first. But as soon as you end that beat, I would, you know, I would suggest like going, um, Say, here's here's a trick that I like to use. I'm going to start, you know, doing the beat, right? If that's my beat. Right, that's that's my beat. So I have that, you know, going on. And as soon as I press the, um, you know, I press the loop thing, it's just, there's no chords to it. So I'll, you know, I'll, uh, I'll set it so that by the next bar, I'm strumming something. I'm not going to wait like four, eight bars until I start strumming. Uh, yeah, for the loop to yeah, come Yeah, for the loop to again. come back around. It's like, yeah. you can, you can do it at any time because there's no chords you can start your you know your new loop at any time so press that button again start the loop like by the time the next bar comes around and then uh, as soon as that you know as soon as your chord pattern is you know is is done start singing start playing start doing something like you know once you um or if it's an instrumental and you get your you know your four chords and you know you can't you can't be picking already as soon as you press the you know press the button but then once you press the button to to loop it you know, don't don't just sit there and wait. Like maybe just do like a little like ditty or just play around with it so that the audience is just not listening to the same thing I, over and over because a loop is listening to something over and over and over. Yeah. So and they you're, weren't and heard that. not doing anything. Yeah, yeah. I I think that like that uh Aaron was saying like a good looper will know that mm-hmm. they they gotta keep like they they can't just pause, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think a good looper or something that it's like, oh, shoot, like, try, yeah, like you mm-hmm. said, like, you don't want to, like, you know, make mm-hmm. anybody feel like, oh, right. not doing <laughs> good at looping or whatever. But, like, I think uh sometimes people who loop, too, like, something that they do that bugs me mm-hmm. is, like, they build their entire loop and it's sounding cool, right? And, like, the momentum <laughs> is going up and up and up. And then they go, like, I'm going to add a little ambient noise here. <laughs> and it's like. Oh, you just killed all your your momentum. <laughs> like it should if you're building up, yeah. right? I just you should to, hey here somewhere. Like with or, my, with my, or they my they do the thing where they they have their no, volume like pedal even, on yeah. guitar and then they oh, go even more nah, subtle. Like yeah, nah, nah, yeah. And it's like <laughs> it's cool, but maybe you should have put that earlier when you're building yeah. the loop, so mm-hmm. it just keeps going up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Don't put it at the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so um. We we talked about you know the rhythm, so um, I might either start with the rhythm, which would be like some kind of percussive thing to keep time, and I, I chose that because it's really simple, and that'll give me a one, two, three, four, and then I'll like I'll loop that, or if I need eight, so on and so forth. You need to plan it ahead, of course, so you, you know you get that, and once it starts, once it starts looping, start to begin to add you know all your loops already and um the the awesome thing is when you use one of these and i, I believe it um it's the same with any you know anyone as soon as you hit this uh this thing it'll keep recording but then it'll just restart the loop so you can actually start playing something think, already you know on top of it right so like that one you need to if you hit it just once it'll just be play right yeah it'll just oh no it'll keep recording because so it'll replay it'll replay the loop but it'll, the recording won't stop I thought that was like for mine. I think at least the boss mm-hmm. mine is like a, a generation older than yours. Mm-hmm. Like if you hit that, it'll just keep playing, and you have to hit it again to mm-hmm. add another layer to it. Yeah, no, this uh, stays on. So there's like the the red uh, the red light for record, red light for uh, green light for play. So at first it'll just have the uh, you know just have the record light, but once you hit it, the play light goes on, but the record light doesn't uh, doesn't go stays, off. Like yeah. it stays you mm-hmm. know stays on. Um, as, so, okay, let's talk about layers again. And, um, I have the beat. I have the, uh, you know, the strumming pattern. Start, like, start singing, start playing, start doing, you know, start doing something. And if it's something that's going to be kind of, you know, repeating or if you need more things, uh, like little ditties and whatever, like add, add those little ditties. And, like, and, and if that needs to be looped, you know, like I said, 
you know, those things, loop that in there already. Um, let's see. And then just, just kind of play. Cause the more complicated the, uh, the, the loop is, you don't want to, you don't want to loop complicated things. Um, because it'll just keep playing that same complicated thing over and over. And then it no longer becomes like a complicated thing. So if I'm gonna, you know, if I'm gonna loop, uh, that, that's not that complicated. That's it. Then like loop, you know, loop something else again. But if you're doing something like a, imagine listening to, <laughs> yeah, looped over and over. Yeah, it's something that you would want to do yeah. just maybe once in the song. Just just or... once. So like you can, you know, you can always just just play and not not record stuff. So you can start like doing doing little ditties and then uh, singing along. You have your beat. You have your you know you have your strumming pattern. Really, that's that's all you need as you know as as a uke player. Unless you're you know you're playing solo and you want more and more stuff, but uh, trying to keep it to a minimum as you know as possible would be the best approach because the more layers that you're you're adding, the more fake the performance kind of gets. And I, that is the word that I chose because that's it's basically what it is. It's like if you're looping it, you're not actually playing that. It's like you know you you played it and you're looping it, and the, the machine is kind of doing that. You know, playing those for you even though you yourself played it first but then it was just the machine redoing yeah, redoing yeah. the same riff so it's like the more fake it sounds the less like you know for me like the less it's about that artist like showing the art or showing the song and stuff it's more about like the the machine kind of showing you you know like the, the song i think i think looping has mm. become into a thing where it's like people would think oh how complicated can i get with making loops right mm -hmm. But it like originally it started as I don't have somebody to play with, mm -hmm. so I buy this pedal so I can play by myself yeah. and have somebody or mm -hmm. have like this pedal back. back, back yeah. Yeah. In fact, yeah. we were earlier today we were talking about Kirby, mm -hmm. Kirby and Kid. Kirby is on Kawhi. He's just like he's, he's he plays with master. some other people, <laughs> but um, when he does his solo gigs, mm. he's probably the smoothest person that I've ever heard use a loop pedal because you don't notice it. Yeah, like if you're not tuned into it. It just sounds like him. It's like good music. Playing, yeah, 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 playing by himself, but mm. but it's like you, you know you'll be talking and mm. you'll be hearing him in the background mm. and it's like you you just realize that right. Oh, how is he doing that? And you look <laughs> and he's playing. You know, yeah. so so what Kirby does is he he starts playing the song. Yeah, and so he doesn't like, even do like you know the percussion hits yeah, or whatever. Yeah, he'll just so know. he starts playing yeah. a song and he he has the loop pedal connected to his guitar. So he'll um just while he's playing the song, he'll loop a section of his guitar that that he knows he's gonna need later mm -hmm. while he's singing already, mm -hmm. and then when, save it yeah, for later. And yeah. then when he he comes to the picking section where he's gonna pick, he starts the loop, and it comes in exactly where he, needs, he needs it to come in, and he starts playing the, playing the thing, and it, you just kind of realize if you're a musician, like how is he doing that playing, you know, the the background yeah. and, and the, the picking, picking at the same time. And you just realize that oh he he did that earlier yeah, yeah. when I didn't even expect it and mm. and that was you know he doesn't do too much but mm. he accents his playing with it and mm. that's probably it's the most the effective, smoothest yeah, most yeah the, because the smoothest use of a loop pedal that pedal that I've ever seen so you know I mean that music is just a bunch of patterns I and mean, we've said that before and stuff you know not just the strumming pattern but also like chord patterns so if that chord pattern is going to show up again or if you're going to pick to that chord pattern or that, there's some kind of picking in the song that like that those chords you know like uh share why don't you just like you know record it, that and just save it save yeah it for, like, but you don't have exactly, to set yeah. aside a specific period of time to just do that yeah, like, yeah what he's doing he's doing, doing it on the fly mm -hmm. yeah it's pretty common for uh like a song to use a verse as a mm -hmm. break, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Instead. So the the chords for the verse is the same chords for the picking pattern. So mm -hmm. while you're already yeah. while you're singing your verse, that's when he like takes those chords yeah. the, and puts it into the loop pedal. Yeah. Or even just like, like yeah, he'll loop it for you know he'll press it for like the second verse because it's gonna share the same yeah. chords. Yeah. So that on the second verse it allows him to like add little like Other little things. ditties just yeah. like how was talking yeah, about so you know things like that. Yeah. Too. You can yeah. add things and it's like oh man like that. That sounds complete. Like it, it sounds, sounds like, like yeah. yeah, like he's playing with a mm -hmm. couple other people, I, yeah. but it's just him. Yeah, mm. he's like kind of an example of who I think uses that the same way too is like John Mayer, right? Mm -hmm. oh. For like, uh, like slow dancing in a burning room or for mm -hmm. gravity, right? Uh huh. 
Like when he's just playing by himself. By himself. Yeah, and yeah. and he can actually play the picking part and the strumming part by himself, anyways, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he could do that anyway. <laughs> but that's like kind of the thing is he his groove is so good mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. he loops it just so he can be like, oh, I can like kind of like solo, himself, yeah. Yeah. and I can have like a little bit more room to add more than. Mm-hmm. If I was just trying to play every single part by myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he does so. it kind of on the fly in that same mm-hmm. way where he's not like, hey, everybody look at me. Yeah. I stopped it. And now I'm going to do something else. <laughs> yeah. And then I yeah. stopped that. I'm do- doing more things on that's, top of that. Yeah. It's more like, so that's the song. That's definitely mm-hmm. like, you you should have good rhythm and good groove. Yeah. When, if you want to loop stuff, yeah, definitely. Or, or like if you, you're trying to get into looping and mm-hmm. looping can help with that too, actually. Mm-hmm. So it's just, if you're having a hard time with looping when you first start, that might be what's causing it. It's just like, mm-hmm. oh, your groove isn't at, like your groove isn't exactly on point or something, you know, mm-hmm. your rhythm is a little off. Yeah. So try yeah, to, yeah, that's another that. thing too, is that if you start off slow and, and during it's the loop, like, you speed up. up when it, it comes back, it's going to be really, it's always going to like yeah. slow Jump speed up. Slow, slow, yeah. speed yeah. up slow. Mm-hmm. I think, um, you know, watching somebody do loops and stuff or, uh, or looping in general, like, kind of shows a person's, like, musical taste, you know, too. Like, how Kirby kind of does that. His taste is like, okay, it needs to sound like I'm just playing, you know, like I'm playing by myself. Whereas other people have, like, oh, no, it needs to sound like this orchestra like or like all band. full on yeah. band thing. Yeah. So it's all about, like, taste, too. And it's not. We're not saying that like people who put too much, it's, you know, are have bad taste or anything. It's just it's a different taste, you know. I think well, like Kalea and Aiden, right? They yeah. do looping, and oh, they yeah. definitely do the thing where it's more about like adding more yeah. layers. Yeah, and, and like I mentioned right it. in the beginning, you know, I would have twelve like twelve loops at the end of uh, "You Kinda Stick" because that's the kind of song that you it know that, that up, yeah, yeah. It builds up, you know, yeah. to to a big finish. So it just depends on what you're trying to do with your you know with your loop pedal, but. I would say try to keep it as low as possible, you know, the loops as low as possible. And that would give you a, you know, a a kind of normal sounding song. Like it's kind of like you jamming with someone else, like start off with that, you know, like Mm -hmm. make yourself sound like you're, you know, you're jamming with one person, you know, with one other person and they're looping the, or your loop is them just kind of backing you up, you know? So start off with something like that and how you can get that kind of sound is if you just loop, you know, loop those chords over and then just, just replay that up. But the other part to her question is that um, she was talking about different chords for the verse and the chorus. Mm-hmm. So like this little pedal right here, um, you can hold this button for two seconds and it'll start up a new track. So what, uh, what that does is um, you can always... Uh, delete the last track that you loop so if you loop a um a rhythm pattern you know like just like a drum beat and stuff and then you keep that as one loop and then you loop say the uh you know the the verse or something you're you know you're gonna loop that you can stop that loop and create a new loop and put it in there but it's complicated with this one this one is only used really for one one kind of loop but you can if you're good you know with the uh with, yeah, with, yeah. with the there stomping are, there and stuff, to do but there are other... definitely other pedals like Boomerang, like has you know has ones that you can kind of set, like okay, well for you know for the next four bars or you know I need to, I'm gonna do this or that. I think the boss though too, because I I have mm-hmm. like yeah I was saying I have the older one and mm-hmm. you can't do that, you can't like hit the pedal, mm-hmm. but Boss has expansion pedals kind of where mm-hmm. it's just all it does is send the signal that says like. Hey, start another loop, you yeah. know. Yeah. So. Yeah, there is yeah, there's one that you can attach to this to like yeah. it's yeah. just one like one more pedal set. You have three to you know, three to choose from and it exactly does what um you know what Kahai is talking about. And I think there's like yeah. a plug in here. And, and, and there's the also a, a yeah. one that's longer than this too, right? Mm-hmm. Like multiple What's, it's like it's like a big one. That's the one that Kalei uses, I believe. He yeah. uses a boss like big yeah. boss pedal. But you know, the best way to learn and to to really kind of understand um, how loop pedals work is just to try it out for yourself or watch a bunch of people, you know, kind of doing it. Uh, we mentioned Kalei, you know, is really good. I know Jake, you know, does uh, does loop in his, uh, you know, in his set too now with like with uh, with Dragon Heartbeat, that kind of thing. Um, also, you know, like professionals, like big time professionals. I'm not saying that Kalei and, uh, and Jake are <laughs> professionals, but like people like John Mayer and people like um, Ed Sheeran, like one mm-hmm. of the best loopers Sheeran, that I've yeah. ever, ever seen. Um, 
Uh, but definitely, uh, you mentioned Aiden James too. Aiden James, amazing at looping. Um, Carly G, you know, she does oh, a lot yeah. of cool yeah, like loops as well. So there's some amazing like artists out there that, that are doing some cool loops. Uh, Chris Salvador, you know, I follow him on Instagram, oh, and he does a lot of cool loops he's... like with his guitar. Yeah, he's actually really good. <laughs> he's <laughs> super good, but just maybe not. Stuff. Yeah, um, maybe Daniel... not playing ukulele too much, but. In the chat, Daniel yeah. said uh, KT Tunstall had a great two-part oh, yeah. tutorial mm. video on how she does loops, and I she was one of she was one of the first people that I've seen do loops on yeah. YouTube. Yeah, didn't, that, that, really that got crazy popular, horror, like that yeah. didn't, horse song. Didn't she do like ABC, like mm. Jackson Five? Like I think she did yeah, one of their she, songs. It, as yeah, a loop. her videos kind of went viral. It was like mm-hmm. the first viral videos of like for, for looping. Yeah, yeah. yeah. KT Tunstall, yeah. she she spearheaded that thing. <laughs> that. So, like, uh, Jasmine kind of said, like, that she wants to get into looping in mm-hmm. general and didn't, uh, there actually is, besides pedals, there's actually mm-hmm. other things that you can loop with, right? Yeah. But pedals are kind of, like, the most common because usually people who are looping are playing their instruments with their hands or they're doing mm-hmm. something else. So they need, mm-hmm. some, mm-hmm. they need to use their feet to, yeah. to hit the start and stop switch. Mm-hmm. So... But uh, yeah, I mean, experiment with it, like connect it to your instrument, connect it to your microphone, because you, you know, you as far as loop, yeah, you can lose vocals too. It doesn't have to just be your instrument; you can lose vocals as well. And so you can, you know, add some harmonies to yourself. But it's, I mean, with with pedals nowadays, it can make your instrument, and you can get mm-hmm. all sorts of different kinds of crazy sounds. I mean, there is a pedal that we heard from from Magic Mike Odo is uh, is the one that makes you sound like that anime character. What is that? Oh. Like Hatsune Miku. Hatsune Miku. Yeah, I saw that. Too. <laughs> and he was saying that like that's that specific pedal is always sold out. Really? Yeah. He's like every time they make more, like people just buy it. And he's like, it is the dumbest pedal. Like according uh, to Mike, uh, it's a it's a it's a very specific one <laughs> one trick. <laughs> pedal (laughs) so make yourself sound like an anime character if you guys haven't seen this i'm sure like uh kira is gonna put like the 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 show notes and you guys are gonna be like what is this because i was like what is this it's basically an anime character who um who who does shows (laughs) like it's i can't explain anymore like she does performances yeah, it, live, start, performances. Yeah, live performances. Yeah. Live performances. <laughs> it, it started off as a, a program uh-huh. that they they had an actual person like you know do Be all the, the recording. Yeah, it's like a MIDI oh. kind of thing, mm-hmm. and then from there, like you, people program it to sing for them, basically. Mm-hmm. And so I want that pedal so them. bad. <laughs> like, you don't even know, guy. Like yeah. I want that pedal so bad. Uh, I forgot about <laughs> I don't that. You know why? It's probably expensive, like because you know it's. It's being it's yeah. sold out everywhere, so like they can wrap up the price in that thing, it's, and people still buy it. I'm scared I, of how much it is, but I kind of want it. Yeah, I I don't think it's. <laughs> I, I've seen people use it, and they're like, "Oh, this is fun," but and I'm not gonna use it. Ever. I'm not gonna use it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like not not actually usable. Yeah, for for the next for for know. bandits, I'm gonna use but the I, have, <laughs> pedal. I have all kinds of instruments that uh, mm. are pretty ridiculous, though. So uh, it's that's just for true. fun. Yeah, that's true. I can't oh. judge you for any of that. <laughs> But, <laughs> for wanting something that you're never going to use. So you just got a theremin, right? Yeah, yeah. I just picked and, up a theremin. And I, I remember showing you guys, like, one of my favorite looping kind of things is a lady connected the theremin to her looper. Mm-hmm. And so when her, when her loop came back around, yeah. it she triggered the volume with the theremin. So she oh, would cool. put her hand closer to make the loop get louder and oh, then pull yeah. it back ah, to make it get softer. Smart. Yeah. So it's like, and then she really, it was a really dynamic performance by doing mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. kind of like, I think that's what people who are good at looping mm-hmm. know to do is mm-hmm. to make the performance dynamic, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to have to make a cover of the Rick and Morty theme with your theremin. Oh, <laughs> that's, does it have like a... Yeah, it's, I think it's, it's on theremin. Oh. Like, the I, sci-fi kind of sound. Yeah. Do, 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 do. It's a good, it's a good theme. <laughs> that's that's my special request. <laughs> Such a request to use the Rick and Morty theme. Um, yeah. So you know, it's it's a lot of experimentation, a lot of like being really good with rhythm. Because if uh, like we were saying, if it's if it rushes, if it slows down, it's going to mess up the loops. So just keep that in mind that you're looping something that you've done. So you kind of have to do it correctly because it's gonna have to loop correctly yeah. if it's Talk- done incorrectly and you're just gonna keep repeating keep that hearing that's, yeah. the mistake that you made <laughs> i think that's on katie tunstall's like performance right oh, yeah? 
she recorded it, and then she's like, guys, I gotta re-record, cause I got too excited when you guys started clapping, <laughs> and I like, sped up, so I gotta, I gotta redo it, I'm sorry. But, yeah, so, um, you know, as, as little layers as possible, unless you're really going for something grand, then, you know, go crazy, you know, like, um, no one's gonna tell you that, you know, you're doing something wrong, it's your own creative, you know, kind of, uh, um, song, and it's your creative outlet to get all these ideas out, but, if you're doing it for performance and stuff and you want it to be kind of seamless, the less loops, the better. Um, but you can always layer the, the rhythm pattern, the strumming pattern, little, uh, you know, little, little pickings here and there. And if you want to do multiple tracks like chorus and, uh, and verse, I would suggest getting the pedal for doing things like that because that's not the kind of, I mean, you can, but it would be super duper hard. Or maybe just get this pedal and get the extension, like third, you know, um, uh, third stomp. I think, uh, well, I think even then, like, I think most people don't do that. Like, mm. if, you know, yeah, they just they'll go crazy. Well, like, uh, they'll just focus yeah. on building that loop for whatever the verse or chorus. Yeah. And then when the actual, when the mm. part comes yeah. that they, you know, need to play something different, they'll just play it live, anyways. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's another thing that you can do too, but. And that kind of what makes it dif- uh, difficult if you add too much layers. So if you're adding too much layers and you're stopping, you know, the verse to play the chorus, the chorus is going to sound super empty because you don't have all these, all the you know, like things, all the little yeah. ditties and stuff that you're doing with, you know, with the verse. So try to keep it, you know, keep it simple so that if you do have to switch up the chords, you're not like losing a lot of things. Yeah. So that's, that's something to keep in mind also. Um. You know, like we said, we're not like experts at looping or anything, but these are just kind of basics that uh, you should keep in mind. But there's no substitute for actually trying, you know, a, a looper pedal and, you know, trying out for yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, there are cheaper ones than, you know, than this. This is kind of expensive, I believe. I bought this for 250 mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, it's an expensive pedal. Um, they do they do have loopers where it's mm-hmm. just a tiny thing with one button on yeah. it. Yeah. So there's, there's cheaper yeah. ones right. you can just kind of try. I if you have a smartphone, they have free looping apps, which oh, yeah. is not yeah, like tap with your this... tap with your toe. <laughs> well, or you can uh, I, I don't know when yeah, I have to you tap it. When I have to build a loop and I have to use my hand because I'll, I'll use like mm. programs on my computer to do the yeah. same thing. I just count the beat first, right? So it's like one, two, three, four. Tap it, mm-hmm. and then like then I just play it that next. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a layer of emptiness, mm-hmm. but it has my my rhythm there basically, mm-hmm. and then I just fill that next part. Mm. So that's kind of like how yeah. you can do it. Yeah. There's so there's you know things that you can try. It doesn't have to be this specific pedal or the big ones or whatever. You can like kind of just try it out with a small, maybe fifty bucks or something like for something like that for a tiny one with just the one button. Um, but really, you know, really learn it. And I would suggest for for people that want to get better at the ukulele, just get that tiny one like in general yeah. because you can or use it to fall. practice or you know because <laughs> you can like record you can loop stuff and you can kind of like uh practice your scales practice your improvisation practice like you know phrases and stuff and phrasing so even if you're not into doing loops and whatever i think a looper is a great tool just as as an educational tool you know you can teach yourself Mm -hmm. and get better at certain you know certain parts of the song you you suggest people use like their phone memos right yeah oh yeah the voice memo yeah just Mm -hmm. built in Mm -hmm. and like or when people are like, oh, I'm trying to learn Europa. You tell them mm. like, oh, record yourself playing the strumming first with the voice like memo. Three minutes straight, you know, just mm-hmm. just doing the chords. But then if you had a loop pedal, you can just record the uh, the the chord pattern one time. Just loop that. You can practice Europa as much as you want, like mm. 10, 15, 20. Heck, play for an entire hour if you want to play for an entire <laughs> hour. So you know, there's uh, there's no substitute for trying it. I would suggest you try it. You that. Know? Uh, uh, mm-hmm. Going back to that loop, that looper is kind of expensive because you can actually do multiple like different layers, or you can take off layers, and mm-hmm. you can. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's do... two tracks, so you can like put the the volume of one track in mm-hmm. the other. Yeah. So there's more features, and then the the one that is like fifty dollars is kind of just more just bare loops. bones. Yeah. yeah like yeah. we'll just focus on one track, mm-hmm. and then just repeating that over and over. Yeah, and this one like has a uh, has a mic jack, so you can. Um, not just put your instrument in, but you can also put your microphone in. So that's kind of what makes this one a little bit pricey. So you can loop using microphone or a quarter inch jack into this. 
and uh like like we were saying the track one and track two is adjustable so if you want to make you know like your rhythm like your rhythm track um track one and then switch over to track two um and have that loop be a little bit louder you can do that as well and there's also um effects so if you press uh, I believe uh, this the the left side twice. It'll do you know an effect which would just bend down. Uh, so the first one is bend down. There's a step phase. There's a sweet filter, uh, and there's a tempo delay. You know there's uh, there's all these things you can add. That I use uh, bend down to end songs. <laughs> like so it just goes pew and then stop it. <laughs> stop it. That's how I end. You know um yeah what song I I use that for? But I use this this pedal. For uh, for only a few songs, and I actually bought this pedal for my very first um, Czech Republic show because um, uh, they could only bring me up and they couldn't bring Aaron up. So I'm like, okay, well, this will be Aaron, I guess. You know, like <laughs> pay two hundred thirty dollars for a replacement Aaron, like which is whatever, you know. And I had to like learn it that week in order to like how to use it. Like, I don't even know how to use this thing, and I still don't, you know, because I'd rather have them just fly up air and then I won't have to like learn the you know yeah. learn new loops for those songs that I want to do. I uh, even though there's like people who are really good at looping, mm. I I never think it's like a replacement for like No, for for a an actual human like playing for you definitely yeah. not. Yeah, definitely yeah. not. Okay, that was that was a long, you know, long discussion on looping. I know not Can a lot we, of people are going to even try to loop. So uh, before we yeah. totally get off, though, yeah. uh, Renee asks: So can you record a loop before you get on stage, and uh, do you plug the pedal straight into a uke and then a speaker? Um. So your ukulele plugs into. I'll go answer that that first. Your ukulele plugs into this, which it goes into the uh, instrument in, and then there's an output where that uh, that quarter inch goes to the speaker okay or the amp or a um, or a mixer or whatever you know whatever you usually plug into so you can do so this works just like a normal pedal where you connect to this and this connects to the into you know, the thing um you can also connect your microphone to this so on so far you can have like the mic volume and adjust that um you know adjust it here so this only controls the xlr whereas um Everything else, you know, you can just control it with your uh, with your ukulele or with the side pedal or with the DI. Anyway, um, so as far as uh, as looping stuff, this particular model you can. So right here is memory. It stores up to ninety nine uh, tracks of, of uh, you know, that you can that you can store into this. Um, you can you know choose up or down or whatever. So you can uh, you can record a loop and you can save it. Okay, so you can save the loop into whichever, say, like, I'm going to save it into zero one. So I'll play the loop, and then I'll, you know, I'll click on write, and then it'll just write it on that particular track. So every time I go to that track and I press play, it'll just play that track. So, you know, yes, yes, you well, can. That... So you can have, like, a, you can record an entire set and just yeah. have, it like, pre -done. Does it come with a memory card? Um, no, no, it doesn't have. It so, doesn't need to. It just so if, memory. if you lose, yeah, if you lose if it, this, if it loses the memory, mm, yeah. then you're you're, you're done. Yeah. The, okay, and, so we do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying is yeah. I don't. You wouldn't want to store that's true, things that's that true. are like really complicated mm -hmm. that you would have to do for a show just mm -hmm. in case. Like you plug it in and maybe it doesn't work. Oh, you know? that's, that's your whole show. You know? Well, that's yeah. that's the thing with other loopers is mm -hmm. that the memory only lasts. Until the the power in it like it yeah. keeps going right yeah so once mm -hmm. you like if you unplug it then it'll just wipe the entire thing and yeah. then you plug it back in and it's not gonna be there mm -hmm. so yeah. it really depends on what pedal you get or mm -hmm. what what you're looking at yeah. read read if it has that feature yeah. to save stuff Yoda's saying that a looper has no passion the thing is that's false because. It's, it's all on you. Whatever, <laughs> like yeah. whatever you put in. If you put in passion into whatever you loop, yeah. then yes, it's just it's gonna, gonna loop be loop passion. To, yeah, that repeated passion over and over again. So but if you it'll... played it with no passion, it'll repeat it with no passion. Yeah. yeah. So not necessarily. I mean, it is a robot and stuff, but at the same time, it's you. You know, like <laughs> yeah, still, yeah. like still playing that. So yeah. you are the heart of the yeah. robot. <laughs> <laughs> you are the heart of the robot. Uh, okay, she's asking if, if there's a screen. There's a. a oh yeah, there screen. is. So I don't mean. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, let's all plug this in. So. Bow. Oh, I guess it'll be out. Okay. 
There it is. So here it is. Oh, look at the bright lights. So memory one, you can go to. It goes all the way up to ninety nine. If you you know if you loop something and you click on write, it'll just write it into that. Or you can delete it if you want to delete it. So I delete one, so on and so forth. But it'll basically um, once you write it into this memory, it just stays there. Yeah, it's not a full screen. It's just kind of no, like a no number just, just number number screen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's that's one that I have. It's a little pricey, but I mean the uh, the big one, I think it's like five six hundred dollars or something mm -hmm. for like the the big board kind of pedal. I think a boomerang is like five hundred dollars. Yeah, and I think that's like the industry standard. Like yeah, a lot of musicians ones. use that. Yeah, this is just for like solo gigging musicians that just want you know like, mm -hmm. want somebody to back them up. But I think Aiden like you know he uses the big boss one with like a bunch of other pedals. He has that big boss pedal with a bunch of other stuff. If you guys want to see some good ukulele looping, yeah, check out Aiden James. He's really good. Yeah. Uh, Digitech also makes a mm -hmm. pretty good yeah, one. Yeah. And then, um, what is it? TC Helicon. They I've make a pretty good one, one yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. About but that. the OG one, I think, is Boomerang. Because um, I saw an old... Uh, who's that bass player for Bela Fleck? Uh, Victor Wooten. Victor Wooten. I saw Victor <laughs> Wooten back when I was like... In, uh, in in high school, or maybe even middle school, like my uh, my band teacher, Mr. Yukimura, he's like showing us this this video of him just like looping something. He's just like jamming to it. Mm -hmm. He's Victor Wootening it up, you know? Like, and I was like, wow, that is that thing. It's like, it's a boomerang. It's like a couple thousand dollars. Like, it's a time, you know? I'm <laughs> yeah. like, oh, never the mind. New technology. Because <laughs> I saw that. I'm like, man, I could just play chords with my ukulele. And I'd, I'd do that. I Immediately, I'm like, my uke, that now. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think... I think that's one of the things too is like the looper really if you're a good musician the looper will make it sound even more impressive right mm -hmm. like it'll you can make it sound better and if you're like not as good it'll magnify like, yeah how it's good like, or terrible you are I was like oh that there's an extra beat there <laughs> when it really shouldn't you know mm -hmm. I know John Mayer he made a loop and he's like oh I missed the one oh well I'm gonna play without it <laughs> so he played like it's like what? what how can you do that but that just shows like how good he is right mm. any uh, any other questions that we have uh andrew asked at the beginning of the show he asked uh is there any advantage to having a slotted headstock or is that purely cosmetic it's pu purely aesthetic um i believe but there is a um the string travel is going to be different I don't, I don't know how to like kind of explain it any other way the string travel so when you have um ukuleles that are like this that are either you know um the gear tuners that are like the outside or like the um tuners that what are those the not the non-geared ones um friction like friction tuners or even ones that look like friction as you notice the string's gonna travel it goes from down here it's gonna go up here and with that it's gonna twist this way so my string is doing oh, oh sorry so, so yeah to the close to close up so it's gonna it's gonna travel from down here, right? And it's going straight, it's going up my my uh, my ukulele, and then now it's traveling to the side. It goes oh, maybe sideways. This way. Oh, maybe like that. Okay, so, so that from can see yeah, where, so from here, what direction? It goes up, and it goes to the side to loop. Does that make sense? Now with a slotted headstock, it goes from here, then it goes up here, then it goes this way instead. So it goes, it goes in down. Like, it goes down. So the string is not being it. So at a certain point on this ukulele, because it's not slotted headstock, it's gonna twist because it has to loop, like you know, around this uh, this pole or this uh, this this tuner. <laughs> this this tuner it's gonna have to loop this way, whereas a slotted headstock loops this way. Like uh, <laughs> it's hard to over, explain. Yeah. yeah. It's it's still in the same direction, but but then it's, it's kinda, kind of going yeah, down. Yeah, it's going down like this into the headstock. Yeah, into the headstock. Yeah, which is the same direction because this goes in to the um um in into the bridge. So it goes into the bridge, and then this part goes into the headstock. So some people, you know, some people believe that like the string travel is a little bit better. Therefore, you get a better you know um uh response from your strings because it's not slightly like tilted, but. I don't really believe it makes that much of a difference, but yeah. Also, you know. <laughs> um, it kind of has to do with um, instrument building. True. Because yeah. um, 
So like for a regular neck and headstock, um, because you need the string to lay on your nut, um, mm -hmm. you need some kind of relief. Like the head needs some kind of relief in order to keep the string tight onto the mm -hmm. onto the nut. Mm -hmm. So with um, with a slotted headstock, you can keep the head kind of in line with the neck, mm -hmm. and then it just the relief happens because the string is going into the head. Mm -hmm. So you you can Instead build just... you can build a straighter neck mm -hmm. with a slotted headstock, and it doesn't need as much mm -hmm. of a because the, the you, relief yeah kind of yeah. show kind of see it kind of bend down yeah so you. like here the 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 neck is one plane and then it kind of has to go down like mm -hmm. your your head has to kind of bend back a little so with a slotted headstock mm -hmm. you don't need as much of that relief mm -hmm. or at all um, if you don't if you don't want it and that's yeah. kind of the, some people were talking about flukes. Mm -hmm. um, flukes and fleas uh, by flea market music. That's why it's kind of straight. That's yeah. the reason yeah. why um, they built that into it is because mm -hmm. their necks are made out of like a, a ply mm -hmm. and they didn't want to have to cut it. So like so what it bends. Yeah. So with this, um, with a traditional headstock, you have to, for, for instrument building, you'll have to cut, cut it in order to make the head and flip it so that it creates that relief. Mm -hmm. And you have to glue those together and make mm -hmm. sure that that's mm -hmm. solid. And so I guess um, Jim Beloff and Dale Webb, when they were designing the fluke, um, they didn't want to have to do that. They wanted to have just limited one. number of steps as possible. Mm -hmm. So they just did a straight neck and, and then they the decided time. to do a slotted headstock because that, that would eliminate <clears throat> one step in the building process. Mm -hmm. So um, Yeah, and some people are saying that it takes like some of the weight out of it. I mean, yes, but... I mean, you're adding weight first in order to create the slot, so not really at the end because this, I believe, uh, this headstock is lighter than the slotted headstock that I have because slotted yeah. headstock, you, would, you on... know, you would have you would have a kind of fat, you know, like a fat piece of block of wood, and then you have the you know you have the slot part in there um, because it has to compensate because the tuners are going to be on the side. So the tuners have to be this, you know, are, are this thick. So you have to compensate for that much thickness on the side. Whereas the, uh, this one can go as skinny, you know, as, as not as possible, but as, as much as it can support the, uh, the neck of the ukulele. Yeah. So with the uh, slotted headstocks, they're not necessarily lighter, you know, on the, um, uh, on the top end. I believe they're actually, um, heavier in, in, in the top, but that might be good too, because, um, I believe that most ukes are bottom heavy, so if you add a little bit more weight to the top, um, it balances out the uke. Therefore, you get a better sustain from from the from the ukulele. Because when you strum the uke, if it's all being concentrated on one end, it's only going to ring out from that end. Whereas if both uh, both sides are kind of equal, it will kind of find that you know find that place and it'll ring out a little bit longer. Um, that's why they have what's called like the uh, what what do they call those? I used to have those in my. Uh, on my applause the fat finger oh uh, yeah yeah fat finger yeah. for uh, you know for guitars and for uh for basses and stuff it just basically adds extra weight to the side to balance out the uh you know the instrument making it ring out a little bit longer i remember i had to like like uh what did you use it on um the, yeah with this this one yeah the applause and i used to use it on um well definitely the applause because the bottom was like super yeah. heavy you know uh we also you i mean i also used it on the Lumanogs that I had and stuff, and um, and I used it on the Kabaka that I had, but then I just kind of stopped, you know, stopped using it. But Fat Fingers, they don't make it anymore, I believe. Oh, really? Yeah, they stopped uh, kind of making it. But uh, so, like, mm -hmm. uh, musician's friend has it. Oh, <laughs> it's not the same. It's like different now. I remember I had to look all over okay. for it because uh, yeah. I didn't know. Uh, I just remembered watching this uh, this ukulele special where it was like Jake. It was Kelly Boy, and it was um, Peter Moon, like the three of them. I don't know. I don't know what it's called. I want to know. I, I want to. I want to. I want to remember. But I can't remember. Uh, it's those three, and uh, and Jake had this thing on his headstock, and I watched. I was like, "What is that thing? Is that like a camera? So that, you know, like they can, can kind of show his, you know, like." Mm -hmm. But I was like, it never cuts to a you know to an angle <laughs> of his ukulele yeah, yeah. like that. So I was like, it's not a camera, and it's too small to. What is that? Like, what is that? And I just ended up, you know, like, I mean, I'm, I'm lucky enough to just be like calling, <laughs> calling him. I'm like, yeah. what is that thing on your head? So I was trying to figure it out. He's like, oh, it's called a fat finger. I'm like, uh -huh. where can I get that? Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to be just like you. Oh, yeah, I want everything you have. <laughs> I want everything that you have. 
<laughs> but yeah, and and I I put it on because I, at that time I was um I was playing an applause right, I was playing that particular you know that applause right there, mm-hmm. and um and it really did make a difference because that that applause is terrible at um at sustain, so it gave me more sustain, it gave me a better sound. I don't know, or it could have been placebo. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. You, you just end up <laughs> like yeah, yeah. sustaining so the note excited. for longer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just, just hold, hold it. it. <laughs> sustain it more sounds good sounds that's just like it sounds just, just like, like that sounds just like jake <laughs> <laughs> that, so but yeah so so mm-hmm. kind of back to the question yeah. it's for i i feel like for a player a slotted headstock is mostly aesthetic or mm-hmm. you know like but then for a builder that definitely um factors into how you're gonna build your instrument and mm-hmm. what goes into the, the building yeah. process the things that people have said like oh it'll improve this or that mm-hmm. you haven't really seen no, that no, much with no i mean string travel yes yes i definitely have seen the you know the string travel but as far as if it makes a difference in my sound stuff, yeah no sound or playability yeah, or anything yeah. yeah it's usually if it's like if it comes to that there's other things on the ukulele that will affect it more yeah, right way more. so mm-hmm. yeah it's so minute that i don't mm-hmm. notice it so Take that with a grain of salt, because there's definitely some people who are like, no, no, they this swear by it. it. Yeah, they swear by it. Yeah. But it's just I have I have both, and yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe my ears are just not that good, but that that's up for debate. Also, <laughs> my yeah. ears are not bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, let's let's tackle one more. We have time for one more. Uh, okay. All right, and then let's let's give away this thing. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta do that. So one, one, one really quick one. <sighs> okay. Uh, hopefully you can. Okay. Um, what would you suggest to do to practice and improve grooving? Ooh, I mean, other than loops and stuff. Uh, grooving. I would suggest practicing with uh, with with an album with actual recording. You know, so that you can kind of mimic their groove. So mimicking grooves. Is you know is the best way to learn grooves because once you kind of get the you know get the feel you can do it for yourself later or you know jam with a bunch of other people because other people have grooves also so if you you know if you jam with someone that's like you have to kind of mesh together like both grooves so it's good to kind of learn it that way but my best suggestion would be to uh, to to jam along with with records and albums and stuff that would be the best way to get yeah. grooves. Listen, listen to um, I guess groups that really kind of mm-hmm. have what you're looking a tight, for. Yeah, yeah, something that that really mm-hmm. tight sense mm-hmm. of meshing together yep. and, yeah, and grooving together, and and then mm-hmm. just listen to the heck out yeah. of them. Because <laughs> everybody has like really does everybody does have like a little bit of a different groove, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. with people, it usually is like even with. Uh, Professional musicians or musicians who are incredible. Mm-hmm. Like I heard, um, Questlove, he, mm-hmm. he's like, Oh, when I heard Jay Dillo's groove, like I knew I had to try and play like that. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. like so crazy to me that I like stopped and I was like, right. What is going on? Yeah. Like yeah. how would you even define groove? Uh, because it's, it's like the feel of, you know, of, of like of the song. Like when, there are certain rises and falls in you know in in the feeling in the beats in the rhythm of the you know, uh, of the tune at different yeah times. at different times. So I think that I believe that's that's my own personal like, yeah definition because because say like um your BPM or your yeah. tempo right. is like kind of if if you were to go by the metronome yeah. it's like exactly the same right, right, every but time but that would be super robotic yeah so yeah. the groove is kind of like, like a the human component a human <laughs> variation yeah. on that it's like mm. it stays pretty close to that mm. bpm mm. and the the speed of it mm. but you have the uh, yeah how would you kind of that's that's what i feel you it's kind of like, like a, because... a natural variation mm. so some sometimes some fast, it's some slow, faster some... sometimes it's slower it's still kind of on <laughs> yeah but pretty close yeah. but then Mm. It's the yeah. It's a if it's combination perfect, of everything that makes it into the groove, so. right? Because if it's perfect, then it sounds like it doesn't sound good. Mm-hmm. I believe it's mm-hmm. you know, if it's too perfect, you have to have groove in order for it to feel human. You can well, like when you hear quantized music, it's like mm. oh, that is very obvious. That's 
Like somebody mm-hmm. just said, hit a button. I was like, yeah. everything is gonna line up and everything is yeah. gonna hit that yeah. same beat at the yeah. same time. <laughs> and it's kind of plug in. <laughs> like what what you were saying about playing with yeah. other people. Mm-hmm. It's like your groove changes depending on who you're who you playing with. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of mm-hmm. that. Or, you need to play with multiple ple- people in order to find your the, own groove. Almost, I think, you know? it's like a. I think the hope, right? Like, is that it will you do adjust well with other people yeah. when you're grooving? Because if you don't, if you can't groove with other people, like that's the mm-hmm. thing too, where it's just like they're gonna notice or you're gonna notice. Like, I'm not meshing with yeah, them. Yeah, something yeah. isn't lining yeah. up. Then yeah, you're not grooving with with, with people. That's yeah, yeah groove is very. You know when people say like, "Oh, this is spiritual." It's like it's almost that. And really, it's just by feel. Like it's yeah. it's like very human thing. You know. Yeah. And it's almost like music is meant to be played with other people. Like mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. like it does. You can you can create your own music, yeah. and it could exist in a vacuum, but mm-hmm. it almost becomes more when mm-hmm. you are able to share it and mm-hmm. you know play it with other people mm-hmm. we did we did like a an interview with james hill a while ago mm-hmm. on the podcast that you can still kind of find it if you search on ukulele underground but he talks about that because we brought up his first funk album <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> his elusive funk album where he played everything uh, yeah he came up with the song he even did the, the he recorded <laughs> he did the album art he did everything himself mm-hmm. and then he kind of talks about that where mm-hmm. like you know um it's kind of that that was him at a specific point in time. What was the title of the album? Something uh, the people versus the people funk. versus the funk. <laughs> you have one of those. Eh? I have a copy. Yeah, but that is awesome. I'm one of the lucky ones because it's like, really hard to find right now. <laughs> okay, yeah. um, so I don't mean to cut it off and stuff, but we gotta like yep. we we gotta get going. So you want to give away this CD that we talked about last time? Is there anything else we're adding to the CD or just the CD? Uh, up to you. I don't know. Whatever you um, want to give away. I don't know what I said. Uh, like. Last week, because we were totally here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is that Bandito Tyler album that we were talking about last week, and we're going to give this away. Um, the conditions were email us something. Gimme? Yeah, yeah. It was just because like, you were like, oh, Aaron, what should we do? And he's like, <laughs> say, gimme. Give, yeah. So. Okay. So we got all these people that right now you're going to see them. So spin that wheel to see who gets it. Robert W. Robert W. Congratulations. Uh, you're winning yourself a copy of Bendito Tyler, my third full-length studio album. I'm going to add some um, some Aldi Club stickers, Ukulele on the Ground stickers, and an Aldi Club button to it. So those are also elusive. You can get those. Bam. That's it. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to Thursday Live Lessons. Um, tomorrow... We're going to be doing uh, our 100th episode of uh, Aloha Friday Live Jams. We're going to have a special guest. Uh, we're just going to be jamming. It's going to uh, have a special start time of 12.30. So 12.30 um, p.m. as opposed to our usual time of 1 p.m. We're actually extending the show for half an hour longer so we can jam a little bit more for you guys. Uh, but you know we'll have, some, we'll have some guests. We'll have a guest. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe two of you will be... Maybe Mike can, we, you know, we can, talked can about, come down and stuff. Well, we talked maybe about, Ryan can pop in, you know, like or, or something. We talked about our very special guest, right? That we haven't had. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He's definitely coming, nearly, right? Yeah. Someone booked him, right? <laughs> so, I, I think we. Yeah. I we, saw him we last just, week with his manager. Didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> we I saw him last week. He was at the show last week. He was <laughs> yeah. at the performance. We, we had week. to put down like a five thousand dollar deposit, <laughs> right? Yes. Like just to get, yeah. It's a, <laughs> yes. Hope, yes. Hope, I, he'll be there. He'll yeah. be there. We'll I make sure. need, we can't we can't uh, guarantee that he'll do anything, but he'll he'll, he'll show up. He'll make an yeah. appearance. Yeah. According to his contract, he has to at least show up, right? It doesn't, he, doesn't say that he, he might has still to play. be like a diva. And I know. Like just, you know. I mean, it's it's unfortunate because in the beginning he was. But people still love him, all, so he like was all about Ukula on the ground. He was showing us his yeah. house and stuff, you know, <laughs> like his house with his metal grating. <laughs> and uh, he used to be such a cool guy. He used to do car sing along. Just, you know, like, uh, but now he's just he got too big for his britches. But you know what? I better, I better shut up already because he listens. He to might not. He <laughs> might hear it and be like, you know, get what? offended. Screw those guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, tomorrow is the hundredth episode of Alora Friday Live Jazz. Oh. We're gonna be giving away an ukulele. Yeah, we're gonna be giving away one. Islander ukulele tomorrow, so that's gonna be awesome. So and if you guys want to win yourself a uke, free uke, 
Yeah, we're and we're gonna make the contest where you have to watch live. Yes, to be yes. able to enter. So yeah, yeah, we will only be accept sure entries. To- yeah. Between 12.30 p.m. and 2 p.m. tomorrow. <laughs> but um, next week, we're going to start to do the uh, Songs Made Easy Jam. So that's going to be at, I believe, at 12. 12 to 12.45 and then 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock. So that's an hour before. That's a bunch of the songs and the Songs Made Easy. Speaking of which, Songs Made Easy right after this. So stick around. Keep it locked in here at Ukwala Underground. Um, after that, we have one-on-one coaching. So if you want to participate and ask your questions to me, uh, that's going to be happening at 3 p.m. <laughs> 3 p.m. Mm-hmm. Hawaii Standard Time all the way up until you know everyone gets their questions answered and stuff. Usually until about 4 o'clock. Okay? So we'll see you guys next time. Have a great one. Aloha.